Let's dive into a story of intense pressure and crucial life or death decisions. A real scenario that unfolded out in the battlefield where every choice could be your last and where the haze of war is as unforgiving as it is chaotic. This tale runs deeper than just combat strategies. It's a lesson in responsibility and leadership that applies to the boardroom just as much as the war room. I'll share with you valuable insights that can transform the tide in your personal and professional life. Be ready to absorb the profound wisdom of extreme ownership, where you'll learn that the buck stops with you, and how embracing this can lead to staggering progress both in your internal battles and the external ones you face every day. This tale begins in 2008 in Ramadi, Iraq. A city echoing with the sounds of war, a place where every shadow could harbor an enemy, and every decision could mean life or death. The characters in this high-stakes drama are Leif Babin and Jocko Willing, Navy SEALs whose mettle was tested beyond the limits of human endurance. These two men led special forces teams through the harrowing urban warfare, where the unpredictability of each moment was the only certainty. A specific incident in eastern Ramadi sets the stage for our lesson. As the sun birthed a new day, Navy SEAL sniper teams proceeded with their mission to clear buildings and occupy strategic positions. They were part of an intricate and well-coordinated plan, one that also involved ground troops and friendly Iraqi soldiers who were to join the operation shortly after. But amidst the operation, a chaos ensued so fierce that it became hard to discern friend from foe. Intense radio chatter blared with an urgent message. A friendly soldier had been shot and an indiscriminate exchange of heavy gunfire was underway. Through the mayhem, the sniper team requested armored backup, while the ground forces called for an airstrike. Jocko, stationed at the Central Command with a sinking feeling, sensed something gravely wrong. He stalled the airstrike just in time as he arrived on the scene only to unearth a terrifying truth the so-called enemy was none other than the Navy SEAL team. In the aftermath, an ominous email awaited Jocko. Operations were to be ceased immediately pending an investigation. Wrestling with the details, Jocko realized with a heavy heart the weight of his role in the incident. It was a bitter pill, the realization that he was to blame, no matter how many factors were outside his control. Before his team and top-ranking officials, he took full responsibility for the tragedy, shouldering the weight of the outcome entirely on his own shoulders. This act of taking extreme ownership, the acceptance of full responsibility for every mishap and the courage to confront them head-on is the crux of our lesson. Jocko's admission might have threatened his reputation, yet it achieved the absolute opposite. His team rallied behind him, renewing their commitment. His superiors placed greater trust in him, appreciating his accountability over deflection of blame. From this pivotal moment, we learn an imperative life principle. Progress cannot coexist with blame. When you take absolute ownership of issues, casting aside the all-too-human tendency to complain, make excuses, or shift blame, you create an environment ripe for growth and problem-solving. By owning up to the mistakes and failures, you initiate a path toward correction and ultimate success. Apply this principle in any realm of your life. Facing challenges at work? Instead of casting blame on others, take control and find solutions. Struggling to prioritize your health? It's time to manage your time better, set priorities, and commit to those choices. By taking extreme ownership of that friendly fire incident, Jocko didn't just salvage his reputation, he saved lives in the future. He implemented new tactics to prevent such catastrophes from occurring again, and upon his return home, he passed that knowledge on, teaching other Navy SEALs how to handle similar situations. The message is universal and powerful. If you're playing the blame game, you're stalling your own progress. As leaders, we must embrace every facet of our environment, owning our mistakes, and forging a roadmap to victory. Jocko and Leif's experiences crystallize into a philosophy that is as applicable to modern life dating, personal finance, or your career journey as it is to high-stakes military operations. Remember, if anything in your life isn't going as planned, if the obstacles seem insurmountable, or if you're unsure how to navigate the complexities of life's battles, whether it's financial struggles, professional setbacks, or personal hurdles, the answer lies in taking extreme ownership. It's about taking a stand, admitting where things have gone wrong and asserting that, from this moment forth, you are the one who will chart the course to a better outcome. And here's another truth, extreme ownership isn't a solitary journey. It's a magnetic force. It calls others to stand up, take ownership alongside you, and form an indomitable team moving toward a common vision. When you lead by example, others follow, raising the collective strength of your team, family, or community. Now that you're armed with this understanding, what will be your first act of extreme ownership this year? 
Will you start by shaping your health, refining your investments, or perhaps by transforming your approach to interpersonal relationships? Remember, when you subscribe to this channel and engage with us, you're not just a viewer. You're part of a community striving for greatness, challenging the status quo, and supporting each other in the journey towards personal growth and success. As we reach the end of our discourse, reflect on the value you've gained. If you find that this has enriched your life, feel free to show your appreciation. Check the description for a way to offer a tip commensurate with the insights you've gathered. Your journey doesn't end here, it's only the beginning. Recall the lessons learned, take bold steps, and take ownership of every facet of your life. This is the path to the strongest, most resilient version of yourself, the divine masculine, the unwavering leader, the visionary who shapes their destiny. Let's embark on this transformative journey together and continue to cultivate the financial wisdom, the personal finance fortitude, and the career wisdom that stand as pillars of a life lived with purpose and conviction. Gentlemen, prepare to delve into the underdog saga of the entrepreneurial world with the compelling tale of The $100 Startup by Chris Gilbo. This remarkable book scrutinizes the journey of 1,500 individuals who turned minuscule investments of under $1,000 into profit-churning businesses, each raking in over $50,000 annually, and all without needing a particular set of skills or hiring a horde of employees. In today's exploration, we'll unravel the key insights from these stories and empower you to harness your zeal to create a thriving enterprise. Let's usher into the concept of passion circles. Picture your vehement interests on one side, those pursuits you'd happily dive into without a dime at stake. On the flip side, we have fields others are willing to spend their cash on. The sweet spot, my friends, where your fervor and public interest collide, that's the goldmine that's where the prosperity lies. Bow to your passions, they're your life's work, your natural motivator when entrepreneurship tests your limits. Chris Gilbo is a strong advocate for low-cost entrepreneurship, urging to sweat over equity rather than draining your bank account. Should your venture capsize, you lose only the hours invested hours you would gladly surrender to your passion anyway. This approach minimizes risk while maximizing engagement with what you love. Contemplate this twist on an old adage teach a man to fish. You feed him for life, but do you miss out on a business angle? Not at all. Noteworthy is the offbeat yet thriving businesses that Chris highlights which flourish by educational generosity. It turns out that empowering others creates a following, a community eager to support your monetized offerings. That's a trade secret worth pondering. Now, when pitching your product, remember this, features inform, but benefits? They resonate. Engage emotionally with your clientele, offer them liberation, joy, efficiency, make your commodity an emotional investment. Take the tale of our bicycle mattress, entrepreneurfist with a surplus of unsold mattresses, he innovated a delivery scheme using bicycles. He not only tackled his stockpile but also drummed up ample publicity through this eco-friendly, sweat-infused strategy. His unique delivery concept racked up views on YouTube and transformed his inventory woe into a lucrative hustle. Chris doesn't just intrigue with anecdotes. He supplies a roadmap, delving into a 39-step launch strategy in The $100 Startup. While I won't spill all the beans from the book, Harry will want the full course for that the guide is a testament to its thoroughness in navigating the product launch cosmos. Esteemed viewers, if you yearn to scale the heights of startup glory from humble beginnings, this book is akin to a torch in the entrepreneurial fog. It's a hearty 7 out of 10 for me and a must-read for aspiring moguls craving first-hand narratives to fuel their startup ambitions. I trust these insights have sparked a flame. If you found this dive into the $100 startup enthralling, show some love with that like button. Got a book or topic in mind that you want us to tackle? Drop it in the comments yours may just be the next we explore, with a free copy landing on your doorstep if chosen. Remember, ambition is not a solitary journey. Subscribe, give us a like, and tap that notification bell. Join the ranks of those striving for excellence, those who transform knowledge into results. What moves will you make today that are inspired by the triumphs within the $100 startup? To all the astute minds watching, thank you. Your pursuit of knowledge is what drives us forward. And remember, if this video endowed you with value commensurate to an impactful seminar or a profound book, consider expressing your appreciation. A gesture befitting the richness of wisdom imparted awaits in the description. Until next time, keep harnessing your passions and turn them into your empire.